Yo guys, Punk Rao another video. This one's gonna be all about the most common mistakes that I've either witnessed or mistakes that I've personally made in my experience playing this game for the last decade or so. These are just the ones that came to mind quickly while brainstorming for this video. I probably could have covered more. If I have any more relevant ones, I guess I'll just follow this video up with a part two in the future like I plan on doing for some other videos. This video, so by the ado, way, I won't, yeah, get... so this video is for you guys about making mistakes in leveling. Obviously, I don't make mistakes in leveling, but in case there are some people that just haven't watched my stream enough and gotten good enough at it, uh, I figured I'd just play this and show them pretty much what, what it takes. Into it. Okay, so the first common mistake made while leveling is related to professions. Okay. If you plan on leveling mining or herbalism while leveling up, you need to make sure that you're keeping up with it regularly. It happens very often where people will end up neglecting it or not necessarily going out of their way to find nodes while pathing around a zone, which will cause them to outscale their gathering level range, yeah. and they'll have to end up going back to older zones in order to catch it up. This is why many people will just level up with skinning because it levels up with you extremely effectively I actually and just might supplements do that. your gold gain symbiotically as you go. Yeah, that's Although a really good idea. Going skinning doesn't necessarily mean you're going to skip out on a second gathering profession. If you want to One common mistake that I do make, I heard saw this in chat. One common mistake that I do make while leveling is um playing a warrior. That's That's a big one absolutely speed level then don't take any professions at all that's what joanna would recommend in his leveling guide but he's yeah. pushing for world record level times and you should definitely level i up did the same thing uh, i never leveled professions it. also make sure to pick up first aid i've seen so many people skip first aid in vanilla or people who play healer and say oh i don't need first aid i have healing spells that's just totally wrong absolutely wrong first aid is so good and classic everyone should have it maxed at level 60 it's an absolute must have the next mistake that i've noticed is certain people tend to avoid mob grinding almost entirely and the newer yeah versions they're called the them game, babies there's ample quests you know more quests in a zone than you can actually finish before actually mob grinding was it. what it was about vanilla is entirely different you'll end up completing an entire zone in terms of all the quests that it has to offer and sometimes yeah. still feel under leveled or most of the time still feel under leveled to go to that next level most of the zone, time more like all forcing of the you time to maybe trek across the world and do quests in another zone entirely yep. before you're ready to move on forward so you might finish all of duskwood let's say and still not be ready to step foot into stranglethorn or arathi so you'll end up having to trek to wetlands to reach that next level threshold okay. i would suggest mob grinding in vanilla a good amount if you're effective at hard farming mobs without dying a million times or killing super ineffectively, this concept can be used in multiple different ways. The one thing that everyone seems to mention in their videos, and you've probably seen it a million times, is killing everything on your way to wherever you're going. I'm always killing my uh, way through any path that I take, like killing my way through the jungle in a sense. I sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. taking safe roads or sticking on Depends. the actual game road within itself where no mobs are around. Rather, I'll just kill a path through to the next spot. If you've seen some of the streamers playing, you'll notice that there's kind of this little backpedaling trend that's been going on between a lot of the, especially the PvE fuck? players, where they'll be intentionally S-keying or backpedaling back you know, while fighting a mob and taking that mob to the next mob that they plan on killing. This is pretty effective, although oh, it's yeah. not super pretty on the eyes. It seems really cringy in a certain way, and I'd suggest strafe kiting. I covered strafe kiting in my tank guide, so check out that. Everybody does that. Like, especially in, like, so the thing is that that kind of stuff really only matters at, like, levels 1 to 10. Like, after that, I mean, like, obviously it always matters to an extent, but on those very few levels, that's whenever, the reason why I don't turn and run is because then sometimes the mobs might attack from behind, so you lose your parry and dodge chance. That's why they don't do it by, like, turning. Uh, but anyway, like, I would just say that it really only matters, like, maybe really, like, level 1 through 5, that you're, like, just super efficient and always dealing damage. Because also you're going to have a lot faster, uh, like, like, regeneration at, like, low levels. So I'd say above 10, like, this isn't really as important, but before then, yeah, it does matter a lot video if you want to go into more detail gap on yeah, how to execute too. this but honestly most of you guys should already know what's up it's 14 years of world of warcraft at this yeah. point so i'm not going to go into too much detail on that in relation to this one thing that i would also suggest is sometimes literally just mob grinding for an entire level or maybe even a couple levels if you have the patience for it i always tend to do this in my level 30 to 40 level range 
especially on a new server launch. You can generate tons of gold just from mass killing beasts all the way through a zone. There's tons of examples out there, but you can easily get your regular riding mount by 40 in a couple grinded levels just by selling all of the grades and the hides that you farm off of the beasts that you're killing. Yeah, I'm actually Another probably going to level skinning whenever I level I just up. This is a really a good idea. Quests, or I have a bunch of quests completed ready to hand in. This is really and I'm smart. three to four bars away from dinging. Sometimes I'll just grind off that last little bit of the level and then continue on. All right, so next we got dungeons. Dungeons are super fun in vanilla. They're an adventure, the whole process. Finding heroes to fight alongside you, trekking to the dungeon as a unit, getting lost in the dungeon, you know, finding your way through the actual dungeons. And uh, dungeons aren't exactly linear in vanilla, but people very often make mistakes when it comes to doing dungeons in vanilla. This first one is honestly pretty subjective. Sometimes people just do too many dungeons while leveling up. And if I think it's only useful to do dungeons one time. You do it with all the quests and then you're done with it. You never fucking do it again. Uh, that's always the way that I've done it in Vanilla WoW. You do dead mines once, you complete all the quests, and then you never go back in there again. Uh, if you do it, you're just wasting your fucking time. Uh, there are very few items that you need to get. Like, maybe you do Scarlet Monastery a couple of times because it's very time efficient. The way that we're going to handle this is that whenever, you know, like, I'll be leveling probably with McConnell, we'll be doing duo leveling, and then maybe Esfond and, like, his duo will be leveling too, and then, like, maybe a few other guys randomly. We will just kind of converge and do the dungeons whenever we all get to the appropriate level. And that just kind of makes it, it, it just, I think it just breaks up the monotony of just leveling over and over. And I think doing the dungeons, it's kind of part of like, if I was really trying to go for like a world first record for leveling, uh, I'd be playing on private servers constantly, etc. Like, I think I'll probably be one of the first actual just like normal streamers to get, uh, to get level 60. But I'm not really going for any sort of world first record, personally. If you want that, but if you want that to be part of your experience and you know you want to do a bunch of dungeons or you want to redo the same dungeon over and over again because you're trying to f get a specific item, then I mean sure, if that's how you have fun then do it. But keep in mind that dungeons don't give great experience in vanilla and travel time to get to certain dungeons can really eat away at your slash plate, slowing your leveling pace significantly. But the most major mistake that people make in relation to dungeons while leveling up in vanilla are dungeon quests. So, in the new game, it's all streamlined. It's idiot-proof in a certain sense, whatever you want to call it. Every dungeon that you enter has tons of quests at the beginning of the dungeon itself when you zone in. There's just a bunch of quest NPCs there. You pick up all the quests, rush the dungeon, do the quest, finish, and you're done. But in yeah. Classic, it's not necessarily that simple. There's quests for most dungeons, sure. Pretty much all of the dungeons that I can think of off the top of my head. But it's not necessarily clear as to where you get them. The quests are generally attained from random quest areas in surrounding zones, so the most common one, let's say, is for dead mines, for example. You'll get quests for it in Westfall's Sentinel Hill, and some of the quests will require doing an actual chain outside like the Defias Brotherhood chain before you get yep. access to the dungeon quest. And sometimes, the quest will literally be on the other side of the world for no damn reason at all. So if you want all the quests for a dungeon, you'll have to know where to get each specific quest for the dungeon. It might take you super far away. There's a spreadsheet. It's very easy to do that. Like what you do is you basically just have everybody go to a different place, right? So like for, for this, like you have one person get a quest in Sentinel Hill. I think there's a quest in, uh, there might be one in Ironforge. I forgot if there's one in Ironforge for, uh, for dead mines or not. But you have like the people in Iron Forge like go go get the quest there, and then everybody gets one thing, and then they all come together and share them. That's at least what we did uh, in the beta. I thought that worked really well. Three in Stormwind. I thought there was five total. So there's the th is it the three in Stormwind? Because there's killing the fo Foreman Thistle, whatever, getting the Miner's cards, the Bandanas, and then there's well the Bandanas quest drops in, in Westfall. Then you have uh, the Defiance Brotherhood Capstone quest, and then can't share. Uh, yeah, you can. We, yeah, we did. What do you mean? Like, yeah, yeah, we did. Like, we shared it. Like, we did this in the game. I mean, unless they changed it. I mean, I'm not really sure what to say. But, I mean, the VODs are still up. You can see us sharing the quest. Not all quests. Well, some you can, some you can't, obviously. But, uh, I'm talking about ones that you can share. Uh, the miners cards, for example, I'm like 99% sure you can share that quest specifically. Same as the Foreman quest. Obviously, the Missing Diplomat quest, or not Missing Diplomat, whatever the fuck it was, right? The Defias Brotherhood thing. The, you know, Defias Brotherhood Diplomat guy, whatever the fuck he is. Defias Messenger. Yes, Defias Messenger. Um... You can't share that one unless you're on the same part of the uh, of the chain. Yeah, of course. From the Nostalrius days, that has all of the dungeon quests listed in cells and pages within the spreadsheet. And it goes through in some detail per quest on how to yep. attain it and where to attain it. 
There's also probably going to be an updated version of Atlas loot that's being developed for Classic WoW, and I'd imagine that each dungeon page will probably have a tab on the side of it where you'll be able to actually go through and see all the quests for each dungeon that you're selecting and looking at all the loot for. So okay. I would definitely suggest having an understanding of where things are before you're going in, you know, what dungeons have quest rewards that you want to be pushing for, and in general, which dungeon quests you want to prioritize or you find could be effective while leveling up before just blindly heading into classic dungeons without any understanding of how the dungeon quest system works in vanilla. Now, this one might trigger some people out there, but this is just my opinion from playing on high population fresh vanilla launches in the past. And honestly, it might not be as significant of a factor if we consider layering and its effect on the vanilla experience. This is a mistake that I've done mm. in the past and I've seen others make the same mistake as well, is getting caught up in Stranglethorn Vale. Stranglethorn is the first real neutral zone in a certain way. It's the first horde slash alliance contested area and with neutral quest zones, you know, alliance and horde camps, and in general, it's a spot where everyone seems to always gravitate to in vanilla. This can be a double-edged sword. The questing in STV is great. There's so many quests there and tons of mobs to kill everywhere, as well as some really nice quest rewards. But on the other hand, it can be an absolute mess. Stranglethorn Vale during a fresh vanilla launch. Big fucking truth. This is why I stopped playing on war mode. Is that I would spend literally like an hour and a half doing my world quests whenever I could do them without war mode in like 10 minutes. But I would be sitting there, I'd be like, some dumb fucking mage thinks that he can come at me. Well, we'll fucking see about that. And so then I kill the mage. Then the mage has somebody help him. Then they kill me. I say, what do these motherfuckers think? They can, oh, they can 2v1 me? Well, I'm going to get two more of my boys. Yo, who's here? And then I try to go and I fight him, right? It's 2v2v3. 2v3. Now it's 3v4. And I'm just wasting my fucking time killing people, chasing them down, not even doing the quests can be a total cluster of level 30s to 40s. You I mean, an mage. absolute BFA, cluster. Yeah, sure. On a PvP server, you can you easily get caught up in endless battles, or you might get camped for a super long time. Or even if you're that kind of player, you might end up just distracting yourself and trying to pick a fight with every horde or alliance that you come across. This can slow down your leveling pace quite significantly. I'm going to end up running a hunter in vanilla, so my plan is probably to go to northern Stranglethorn Vale, do the big game hunter quest line, and then most likely head north to Arathi Highlands and just mob grind and quest. Then head to Desolus in the later 30s for pretty much the same thing. I want to farm gold as I level, so I'm probably going to end up avoiding Stranglethorn Vale for the majority of it. As I know, I'll probably end up getting caught up in brawls pretty much non-stop. When I start, I can't stop. If someone kills me while I'm kiting a mob just trying to live, you know, or kills me in a scummy manner, I'm going to end up spending 30 minutes to an hour just trying to hunt that same person down with a vendetta. So again, yep. Stranglethorn Vale can be a double-edged sword. Yep. And I guess the point of this is, if you want to level at a strong pace, you probably don't want to get too sidetracked with world PvP outside of the odd fight. Stranglethorn Vale, if you're hyper competitive, will bring out that nature out of you and throw you into a PvP frenzy. Also, as I mentioned, that I'll be gunning for I that, love that gun video, from man. Game Hunter. That's another thing that people tend to overlook. If you can get an idea of where good weapons are, good quest rewards that yield weapons are for each level range, try not to skip zones that'll end up giving you a big weapon upgrade as a hunter or a melee. A strong weapon is the biggest boost that you can get in vanilla, especially at lower levels. That's why warriors gun so hard for that whirlwind axe at a low level. It's a huge power spike which speeds your leveling process up significantly. The next mistake that I see very often is heading into a higher level zone way too early. When mobs are significantly higher level than you are in vanilla, you're at a severe Never disadvantage due to how defense and weapon skill- Like the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna always farm lower level mobs. Like warriors are gods at killing lower level mobs, right? Such as, uh, you know, like let's say like, you know, in Westfall or, you know, like rogues or something like that. But whenever you fight higher level mobs, like, you know, red level or orange level mobs or mages, then you're gonna have a bad time. Uh, is based on your current level and in, in respect to your opponent's level. And also for casters, it's a similar thing with spell hit. I've done this many, many times when I was younger and new to World of Warcraft, but as I stated earlier, there aren't enough quests in one zone to level you through the entire level range of that zone. You're gonna have to end up visiting multiple different areas within that level range in order to get yourself to that next level threshold. I used to be so enamored with Stranglethorn Vale as a zone when I was much younger, and the moment I would hit level 28, I would want to go there so bad that I wouldn't be able to fight that urge and I would just go. Even if a lot of the mobs in the mid portion area were red to me, I would say screw it and just head to the jungle. We this did the isn't same thing, because and, and we fucked ourselves and doing it. Skills is it was based so off dumb. Your level, you're so weak against those mobs that you might be able to do the first couple quests, you know, killing baby 
maybe tigers and panthers but the moment you're done with that the mobs will be level 33 and 34 and you're done you've just hit a wall it's way smarter to stay in a zone that you out level by maybe one or two levels or that's right at your level if you're level 28 go to hillsbrad foothills till early 30s or just mob grind in your level range to the early 30s then head to stranglethorn when you're ready to head there this next one is related to travel Okay. While you're leveling up, you want to travel to important travel points within the game if possible. This For is a meta thing because while you're traveling, you should always hold like taking a shit or taking a piss until you have to get on a flight path. Like you wait for that moment and then you do it. You hold it until you go on the flight path and that way you're maximizing time and you're never truly AFK. For example, Menethil Harbor in the wetlands, you know, I wouldn't skip the wetlands if you're Alliance. Same with at least going to Stranglethorn Vale and getting that Booty Bay flight path in your level 30s. You want to yep. get these flight paths early, which will open up the map for you and facilitate your ability to travel to Kalimdor, you know, within the, your leveling experience. Rather being than more being efficient, stuck at generally. a higher level, having to run over there as extra travel time in order to head to opposing continents in your inevitable higher leveling path. This next one is super, super important. It can't be emphasized enough. This is a mistake made by a large amount of people, surprisingly enough, at least in my experience. And it's especially important if you plan on taking professions seriously. Make bank alts. When I start, I generally make two bank alts almost immediately. One I uh, actually I did the same thing. I didn't need a, gu a guide to tell me this. I made a bank alt. I named it El Banco. It's a, it's a Spanish for bank. I had El Banco 2 whenever I ran out of space on El Banco 1 for general crafting mats and cloth and things like that and a second boe bank so an alt that i'll send all of my boe green items towards at a higher level keep in mind and pay attention to the green items that you get sometimes it's worth vendoring them if they're worth more gold than the potential mats that you'll get from disenchanting them or maybe sell them on the auction house if they're statted really well always pay attention to the actual green and the stats on the green you know, if they had spell power, healing power, or just really yep. nice stats in general, it might have high value, especially wands with healing power, or spell power. This next mistake is also one that I've seen very often, and it's been stated so many times by other YouTubers, and I've mentioned it in a previous video that I've made, but while leveling up, you don't want to visit your class trainer and buy every single skill upgrade every single time you go there. I'm never gonna learn any defensive tanking spells. My goal in Classic WoW is to not learn Sunder Armor. Like, I'm just not going to learn the ability. Like, uh, the thing is that, said the main tank, okay, well, besides in tanking, like, for DPS, uh, fine. Or, sorry, for tanking, yeah, sure. But until then, I'm just not going to learn the ability. Sunder Armor is a tanking ability. Same with Taunt. I don't want to use them. I don't want to have them on my bar. I don't want to have anything to do with them. Uh, they are purely tank abilities. I, oh, I'm going to level up Mortal Strike and Whirlwind. That's all I need to worry about, boys, and I'm going to spend all the rest of my money on really expensive big swords. Training skills is expensive in classic, especially in the early days when you don't have much That's gold. That's it. Doing this will drain your gold extremely quickly. Instead, you want to specifically train the abilities that are the core to your leveling experience. For instance, as a hunter, I won't be putting too much emphasis on demon tracking, you know, higher ranks of wing clip or, you know, little things like that. Instead, what I'm going to do is focus on arcane shot, serpent sting, and the skills that are first prio when it comes to actually killing mobs effectively. This is really important for saving as much gold as you can until you hit level 40 so you can get that mount immediately. Yep. So last one that he I'm going to cover, I'm gonna cover really gold. quick because again, you know, it's, it's not that something much. that's been stated a million times. But from level 1 to level 10, you don't incur res sickness when you resurrect at a spirit healer. So dying sometimes can be used as a pseudo hearthstone to get back to the quest hand in or to the next spot. From level 11. See, like, that's something that I wish I spent more time on, like, private servers doing, or, like, you know, even on the beta doing, is knowing where to die to kind of, like, speed myself up to move from one point to another for res sick. But I never really spent a whole lot of time doing that. I know there's, like, a few of them, like, dying in the mines and you res at, uh, at like, Goldshire or something like that. But for the most part, it's not really as popular. Into 20, the res timer applies, so but it's point. only one well, yeah. added per level. So at level 11. Wait a minute. So, like, yeah, like, more is zero. Like, so, like, z you start with zero. I've never played a private server before. So spending more time playing on a private server, you, you start with zero. Like, anything would be more, right? I mean... <sighs>
then it's gonna be one minute debuff. At level 12, it's gonna be a two minute debuff. Okay. At level 15, five minute, and so on and so forth. Until it gets to 10 minutes at level 20. So Chat try to gauge is just exactly dumb. how much time really? you need. I had no you idea. You gotta get back into killing mobs again or whatever. And if it makes sense to take a three minute res sickness, then do it. All right, well, that's it for this one, boys. I tried to keep this one brief and just go over some general mistakes that are made uh -huh. while leveling in vanilla. If this video does well, I'll probably continue to make some more leveling videos and maybe some leveling guides. So hit that like button if you want to see more. Make sure to leave a comment if you guys have any mistakes that I may have missed in this video and potentially I'll make a part two and add some of them in. Subscribe for more content, of course. You know the drill, soldiers. I hope you enjoyed this one. And with that said, have a good one. I'm out. Peace. Yep.